to welcome you as we gather for this outdoor worship today on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And what a beautiful day we have today. It's, it's just perfect, uh, just wonderful. Uh, let's begin with the, uh, the opening song, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Refrain first. Do the refrain, yeah. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth, and finally attain to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament uh, reading is from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. 
Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in, in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Romans chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For him, for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, in, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortion, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew chapter 16. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples, to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would like to invite any of the young people to come forward for an object lesson. I know we have a few. Anyway, it's on the subject, upon this rock I will build my church. I got some rocks up here. I got one behind me. Not too light. In fact, if I drop it, I think you might find a might feel a vibration. You can try it. Well, you could hear it. Not bad. You know, rocks come in different sizes, different shapes, and different colors. And rocks are important. If you don't build on a solid foundation, what you build is going to crumble. It will not stand. If you build on sand, it's just going to fall apart. But when you build on a solid foundation, it's going to last a long, long time. Jesus said, upon this rock, the confession that Peter spoke, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, 
that Jesus would build his church. The church is built on a solid foundation that has lasted 2,000 years and is going strong. In spite of what the world does, in spite of the attitudes we sometimes find against Jesus Christ, against Christians, the church is still built on a solid foundation, and it is here to bless lives. By the way, I have a couple of other rocks up here. These are kind of cool, they're decorative. There may be enough for someone to take home. You know, sometimes they look nice. Sometimes they're pretty. But the main purpose of what Jesus talks about is to be a solid foundation, one upon which his church is built. And because his church is built on a rock, our lives too can have a solid foundation. Let's rise as we profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. asked, and you, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter spoke up and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, and you, I love his response. He 
says, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, or Simon, son of John. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So far the text. Yeah, if I look tired, I am. It's been a very busy week and a half. Didn't expect so much activity. You know, when I first heard that uh, the, the pavers were going to be coming to, you know, replace our 45-year-old driveway, I thought, great. And I was so, so happy that we were able to widen it. And somebody said to me, it's a simple project, Pastor. It should only take them three days. Well, three days passed after they started, and they still had not begun to pave it. They spent three days tearing up the old and bringing in gravel, putting down gravel and pressing it down, bringing in more gravel and pressing it down, bringing in more gravel and pressing it down. For three days they worked at, at laying that foundation, because if they didn't have a good foundation, that driveway would start to crack and crumble and give us a lot of problems. It was kind of nice to see what they were doing to provide a good, solid base for the pavement. And we need a sure, solid pavement or foundation in our lives as well. That's why this gospel lesson brings me a lot of comfort. When Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was telling us something so important, that the church is not built on wishful thinking. It's not built upon human opinions. Human opinions had very many different views of who Jesus happened to be. But it's built on the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the one who came to bring us forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation, the one that came to be our peacemaker between us and God, the one who came to, to be that way to heaven, the doors to heaven, to be the one who would be with us always, even to the end of the age. The church is built on a solid foundation, and for 2,000 years that church continues to be a source of hope to those who are discouraged, hope for the dying, comfort to the grieving, and even peace to those who face conflict. Back in 1998, in San Juan Capistrano, in, uh, there was a guy who was in bed. His name was, I think, John Curtis. He woke up to a, like a vibration. And when he woke up, he just figured, oh, there must have been an earthquake in some distance away. So he got up and he dragged his garbage cans out to the curb. Then he went back inside to get a drink of water. And he looked out the back window to the backyard and as he looked out, he realized that two-thirds of his backyard were gone. There was a landslide that, that affected the backyards of three houses in that area. And in that landslide was an $80,000 swimming pool and 300,000 cubic yards of, of dirt. Some of the houses in the neighborhood were lost. It didn't matter that it, they were houses at the time worth over $600,000 with a panoramic view in a nice neighborhood because there is a problem. They were not built on a solid foundation. And our lives need to be on a solid foundation. And we have that in the church. We have that in Jesus Christ because he is present with us to be our savior, our king, our Lord. And that's a promise that we have. Not only does the church have a solid foundation, he offers it to you and to me. Jesus once told a story about a wise man and a foolish man. And he talked about a wise man as being one who hears the word of Christ and takes it to heart, believes it, does it. And he said the wise man built his house on a rock. And the rains came, the floods came, the winds came, and it beat on that house. But that house did not fall because it was built on a rock. But the foolish man, he was one, like one who would hear the word of Christ, but would not believe it. 
I just throw it away. And he said that the rains came, the floods came, the winds came and beat on that house and washed it all away. You see, it's important to be founded on a good foundation. And those of you who do treasure your faith in Jesus Christ, who see it as a very important part of your life, you're founded on a solid foundation. And in life, you may have all kinds of things coming your way, things that are very destructive, very discouraging to many, very difficult to live by, and yet our lives continue to be on a solid foundation. We may not go through pleasant times, but we have Christ who will hold us up. And no matter what we go through, we have in our hearts and our lives built upon this a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And that's a treasure to be built on a rock. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. If we could have a couple of people go forth and uh, get the offering plates and gather the offerings, please. Elder flowers are given in honor of the teachers and staff of our preschool and Sunday school. And the eternal light is lit by Debbie Morrow in memory of Mary Claire and George. We continue to pray for those who have requested our prayers for Kathy and Linda Manthe, Arlene and Sarah, my wife Sally, who's over there, Ron and Carol, Fred and Felicia, Jessica Morrow's brother Jeremy, Brian, who is battling brain to a brain tumor and George as he receives cancer treatment. Tony Pereira requested prayers for a friend, Simon Ng, to best cope with the loss of his wife to cardiac arrest unexpectedly. Nancy Kosky requested prayers for healing for Dawn, Margaret, and Jean. And we also pray for Christine Mason, who is dealing with anxiety and depression. Let us pray. Almighty God, from you and through you and to you are all things. You have built your church on the confession of the gospel and have promised that the gates of hell will not overcome it. To your church throughout the world, grant the faith and courage to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God Almighty, you transform your church by the Holy Spirit so that she does not conform to the world. Draw forth from your people their proclamation of thanksgiving, that they may tell of all your wondrous deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, care for all victims of disaster, for those stricken by illness or infirmity, for the aged and infirm, for the grieving and for those near death, 
especially show your steadfast love to those we have named here today. Lord, in your mercy. From you and through you and to you are all things. To you, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, be glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you. Amen. For this last song, Sanctuary, I'd like us to sing it three times, one in honor of each person of the deity. Sing it three times, so we'll introduce it once, and then sing it. Anytime you want. Thank you for your presence and participation here today. May God bless your day and be with you throughout the week.